Okay, so hello again. We have today a session on introduction to oxygen. Uh, that's why we'll take over with the tutorial. Uh, that's why is from batch five. He works now at the Energy Intelligence, and he will be. I'll, I'll, the mic is yours. That's why you can go ahead. That's why. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, hi guys. Um, my name is Tespai. Um, I work at, at the National Intelligence. Uh, currently, we are working on a, at um, GNI project. So, uh, we go through the uh, agentic workflow uh, and autogen. So, yeah, we can start from there. Should we wait for people or should we just start? No, we can start. I think in a few perhaps from here. Okay, great. My voice is good, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. You can hear my voice clearly? Yes, we can hear and we can see the screen. Okay, great. Yep, hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, I can see it, others, yeah, they can see it as well. Okay, great. So um, today we'll go through the uh, agentic LLM workflow, uh, specifically uh, with autogen. Uh, so yeah, let's start. Uh, so before this uh, agentic LLM workflows, uh, this is basically what we were doing before. We used to uh, provide a prompt or query, then the LLM will generate the text based on the input. So uh, this lacks the ability to perform some actions and interact with the uh, external systems. And it um, actually limited their use case uh, for um, uh, uh, real-world problems, so uh, problem solving. So uh, that's why this agentic LLM workflows has been uh, a big news uh, currently. And uh, the shift towards this agentic LLM flow workflows uh, actually began from that uh, those challenges. So first, it, it uh, tries to eliminate this uh, limited functionality where uh, normal LLMs were now complex, uh, capable of complex tasks beyond uh, text generation. Um, currently, you know, uh, with even uh, multimedia, with directly from the LLMs, we can't actually do that. But we if we uh, change it into this uh, agentic LLM workflow, um, it actually will be able to do this uh, functionalities uh, better. So, um, yeah, then there is a need for automation. So each agentic flow will actually simulate a person or a being that will be able to do that task. So uh, it can actually do everything automatically uh, with this uh, agentic LLM workflow. Uh, then there is a, the rise of LLM operations, which is uh, real-world applications. And those actually require this uh, agentic LLM workflows. Um, yeah, so this this uh, situation is actually uh, shifted us toward uh, this agentic LLM workflows. Uh, we really big this this currently. Uh, you know. So, uh, what are the benefits? Um, first, it will increase the efficiency, so automation of complex tasks, as we as we will uh, see uh, later. Um, then we will uh, have an improved decision making before it, because it will access uh, real time data as as it wants. Um, and it will have an enhanced customer experience because uh, each uh, agent will have its own personalized interaction with the uh, user with the client. Um, again, there is accelerating innovation by streamlining workflows, you know, automation and stuff. And then there will be uh, cost saving by reducing manual labor. So this is just like the benefits of LLMs as well. So yeah. Um, so how are we, are we going to build the, this uh, agentic workflows? So. The idea behind it is uh, enabling the LLMs to interact with external LLM uh, systems and perform some kind of actions. Um, this will uh, expand their capability. So um, currently, there are uh, several platforms that are able to do uh, that will enable us to build this agent across. Uh, these are the three of the, the three big uh, names in that uh, list: Autogen, Landgraph, and Truewell AI. So Autogen and Landgraph, they actually are uh, open source and you can actually get them uh, for yourself, uh, download them and uh, 
play with it. So uh, LandGraph also has a LandGraph cloud, which is paid for of the LandGraph uh, uh, source. So Kuro is, I think, a totally a paid service. Um, so uh, out of these three, AutoGen is the most matured and it has been uh, here a long time. So we will be focusing on that because we are, we as a company as, uh, also have been working with AutoGen as well. We also work on um, LangGraph, but today we will be only seeing the uh, AutoGen part. Okay. Um, so AutoGen. So it's an Microsoft framework that was developed by uh, Microsoft researchers. Uh, uh, it, it's the idea behind it is, uh, um, it, it, is to give the ability of uh, the LLMs the ability to communicate with each other, uh, which means we will be able to build LLM applications via multiple agents uh, that can actually communicate with each other. To accomplish something like that. Um, so they are customizable. Uh, they are really, really uh, customizable. Uh, it can op operate in various modes, and you can use combination of LLMs, human inputs uh, are there as well, and tools such as the function calls. Uh, are there as well? You know, uh, hopefully you guys know OpenAI Assistant, so we can do the same thing with Autogen as well. Um, so provided, uh, so they are also provided a lot of ways we can use Autogen, and you can actually. So I think Nathaniel will give you this GitHub link. Uh, I think it's on the uh, challenge document as well. So yeah, you, you can find their GitHub link. They have a lot of uh, explanations uh, of the this uh, Autogen tool. So yeah. Let's just uh, go over the Autogen demo today. So on Collab, we will be seeing Autogen installation, uh, ways of interacting with uh, humans, and how it interacts uh, with agent with agent. And uh, actually, from this one, we will only be seeing function call. Uh, so we have been testing these two features. So group chat is uh, a feature of uh, Autogen where uh, multiple agents will communicate with each other directly without uh, human intervention, and there will be uh, some kind of a manager uh, existing in between that actually chooses which one to uh, to speak and so on. So it is available on Autogen GitHub. It you can actually look at it. Uh, but uh, we wanted more control over our uh, communication between these agents, so we uh, opt for this function call, which uh, we would will enable us to easily uh, allow these agents to communicate efficiently. So today we will be seeing that function call. Uh, and then we will be able to see we'll be able to see the how we will handle the chat history of uh, the agents as well. Um, so then probably we will be able to see as as well the fast API okay so how how are we going to uh, to use all of this that we will be seeing on Collab inside a WebSocket so that we can actually uh, put it in production or as well as a prototype. So we will be seeing that as well, hopefully. So yeah, let's go to the demo. But if you have questions up to, up to this time, you can, you can ask me. If not, uh, I will go to the demo myself. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. shall, I, shall I continue to the demo? Yeah, I think we should okay. continue. Okay. okay. So, yeah, let me change my screen to that. And, uh, let's start from that. <laughs> You see Jaina? Okay. So you guys can see my screen? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, so uh, today we'll be seeing uh, Autogen demo uh, on uh, legal assistant, but this will not, this will be like if, easily built uh, legal assistant where its job is to do only two things. Uh, one, it will help us, sorry, it's like just, one, it will help us into um, answering simple question, simple question and answering, and one will be to just require a requirement gathering. So we just chose these two uh, tasks uh, because they are really simple and for this demo, they, are, they seem to be enough. So yeah, let's start. So here you can see like 
we have uh, mounted our drive because well, why are we mounting our drive because we have put our pumps here as well so we'll be talking about that later so when you later uh, run this collab you will have to have some kind of uh, prompts here so yeah then we will install the uh, modules hopefully you guys have seen the documentation and the uh, the autogen doc as well so uh, yeah, installation and everything is really simple. This is just uh, part of the to gen installation. Um, then we will import the uh, uh, OpenAI keys. Here I'm using the Tanashia's OpenAI key. Uh, we'll import the required module. So Langchain here, I have only used it to for the embedding for the right system. Just it's a simple embedding and searching as well. So yeah, it's not that important, but uh, we are using it for search. Uh, yes. Then uh, we start our setup. So what we'll be using is GPT-40 for our chat model. You can change it to 3.5 as well. Uh, for our config list, we will use we will be using 4.0. We'll give it the API key and uh, the model. Our tasks, as I said earlier, it will be uh, simple question and answering and requirement gathering. Uh, Trooper LLM, so right now we are not actually using that, so we can uh, remove it, but uh, yeah, for embedding, we are using uh, text embedding is really small, because this is just for the demo. Then we have uh, a few functions, uh, so this is just a compare comparison between the input string and the string list, and it will give us the best match. Uh, here it will give us, uh, it will read the file for us and give us its content. For now, we are just using it to uh, read our prompts from our files. Um, here, we are just building our vector store. Um, here, we are just choosing a retriever type. So right now, we are only using this uh, vector query only, which is uh, vector store that as retriever. So the vector store that we actually built here. This is something that you should not be worried about. I don't think it's necessary for now because I cleaned everything for this demo. So, yeah. Uh, also, this one is not important for our case. So, yeah. So, here we are going to uh, talk about uh, a little bit about worker and our work function. Uh, so, our worker agent here that you, are, you will be able to see is what will, uh, what will actually. Uh, this uh, worker do is actually achieve something uh, a task that the main assistant actually give it so uh, previously i told you that uh, we have requirement gathering and simple question and answering so the, the task that that actually uh, handles that uh, the assistant that actually handles this task is the worker and the worker will have that capability because of these prompts that we will be giving it so for example let's see the requirement gathering so this is just a sample requirement gathering uh, prompt. So your role as an information collector is pivotal in gathering comprehensive accurate data, blah, blah, blah. So here you, you will be able to see the prompts and it will use those prompts to actually uh, achieve the tasks. So this is just handle one task at a time. And how are we going to uh, access this uh, worker uh, agent if through this uh, worker function? So our worker function is the one that actually com uh, enables the communication between the uh, main assistant agent and its worker agent. And what we have here is a, a really uh, simple function where it finds the best match between the tasks. So it will, ch it will try to check which, which task has, has been asked. Maybe if it is a simple question and answering or a requirement gathering. And then it will try to fetch the prompt from these uh, files. Uh, then if there is a retrieval required, then it will uh, retrieve the most important loss. So because we, right now we are doing the legal uh, assistant, it will try to retrieve the uh, important loss. So for now, we the loss that we have in our database uh, is actually uh, Italian law because that was easily accessible for me. So yeah, just keep it in mind. Uh, and then here, there are some Important points here. So here we will give it the prompt. If the, if the prompt is not available, we will not be updating the system message. It will continue as it is. If not, we will update the system message. So this is the part where 
the worker will get the new uh, prompt. So if the requirement gathering actually comes, it will change the its system message into this requirement gathering. If a simple question and answer comes, then it will change its uh, system message into this uh, simple, simple, simple question and answering uh, system message. So this is a very uh, pivotal uh, role that is played uh, in our in our in our uh, use case. And then worker LLM config. This is just a normal LLM config. It's not that important. Uh, and then we will prepare this uh, kind of uh, message. It will have a content. So the content will have the prompts that we will uh, get from here. Uh, we can actually remove this one as well because we already uh, gave it um, the update system message. Uh, then we will give it the message that we will be receiving from the assistant message, the assistant agent, which we will be seeing later. Uh, and we will give it the context if there's a context for, so for example, if the retrieval has been asked, so if this retrieval has come as true, then we will retrieve the nodes and give it to this uh, worker as a context. And the role will be assistant, so this prepared message will be uh, given to the worker as this. So generate reply for this message. Uh, this way we the worker will do its job. So it will it will only understand this this context, this content that you will see here. It doesn't know anything else uh, except this uh, system message that we changed. So every time a new a new function is called, the worker will have a new uh, uh, system message and a new uh, uh, query or uh, prompt so yeah here we are giving it uh, if there is any history uh, inside the worker then we will make it like empty so default this is how uh, uh, autogen uh, assistant it actually puts the chat history so yeah then here you will see time time timer array dot append is just for uh, analysis of how much we actually used in terms of cost um, and uh, tokens, so yeah, we'll see that also later. Then uh, we'll have uh, to create our assistant agent. So this will be our main agent that will actually do the task. And you can see this is a prompt. We told it that you are a legal assistant, blah, 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 and so on. The main problem for now, we have removed the other, uh, the other tasks. So for now, it's just answering the questions. Uh, available workers are these two, requirement gathering and simple question and answering. Then we give it its task, key guidelines that we wanted to uh, follow, uh, how it will be communicating with us. And uh, we told it that to not forget the terminate keyword because that will be our termination uh, message. Um, the LLM config for this, uh, for this assistant agent will be something like this. So anything new from here is, is this function. If you are actually, if you guys actually have seen the uh, OpenAI Assistant uh, function feature, uh, this is really similar. We give it a name, we give it a description of what we, what we are trying to achieve with this function. Uh, we give it parameters such as message, message type, and retrieval. And we give it uh, each description, each uh, parameters description so that it understands why we are sending those uh, parameters. And told it that uh, these three are really required. And if you have, uh, if you remove this one, that's, then it might or might not uh, send this uh, parameter because it's not required. So yeah. Um, so this is how we set up the uh, main assistant agent. We said code, code execution config force because we don't we don't have any code execution needed, so that's that's false. Um, then uh, we define our termination message. Uh, our termination message for now is uh, terminate uh, keyword. If uh, it try if it gets at the terminate keyword, then it will stop the uh, execution or the communication between the user proxy and the assistant agent and it will give us the time to uh, perform human input so here we uh, give it the user proxy so the user proxy's job is just uh, 
it's just like its name. It just gives us uh, a space where the user actually interacts with the system. So the user proxy does not uh, cost us anything. It does not have any OpenAI uh, open setup. We don't give it a model and so on. It's just a user proxy that will enable us to actually talk with the uh, assistant. Uh, plus, it will. Uh, help us into mapping our functions. So the main assistant agent cannot execute uh, functions by themselves. They have to be executed by the uh, user props. So uh, we set up this function map here so that whenever the assistant agent wants to execute a function, it will send it to uh, user proxies and the user proxy executes that uh, function and returns the result to the assistant agent. Um, then some of the key points here include this human input mode. So here I'm using human, human input mode never, so that whenever uh, a human input uh, is required, it will start based on this uh, termination message. Uh, but we will see. Yeah. Uh, then we have max consecutive auto reply. So uh, most of the time, maybe uh, it depends on the prompt, but uh, most of the time. Uh, this uh, agent might send uh, something that's, that the user proxy does not understand. Or let's say, if, if, if you say hello, and it says hello back, but it doesn't add terminate uh, key at the end, then the user proxy cannot stop because the termination message requires something called terminate. So if, if the return message from this uh, assistant uh, agent does not add this terminate message, then it will auto reply to it so that it will it will actually add this terminate and get back to the result to the user proxy. So whenever the terminate keyword uh, sent back, then the user proxy will actually give us the result at that time. Uh, if not provided terminate for more than three times, then it will actually uh, stop the process and give us the final result, uh, no matter the result. So this is a very important. Uh, so this two or three uh, let's say it's all of them <laughs> like so four of them are really important uh, points here you can experiment with the others there are there are other uh, parameters as well but you can experiment with that um so and now let's set up our chat environment uh this is how we communicate the uh assistant we the uh, user proxy will initiate chat with the assistant we can set the clear uh, history false or true, uh, depending on your use case. Uh, silent true is uh, we don't want to display every interaction between the assistant and the, the proxy. Then the message that we will be sending. And what we want as an answer is the last message uh, of the uh, uh, user proxy. So the last message that the user uh, proxy actually uh, receives, that will be our last message, and the response is, is that. And so we want to uh, respond to that last message. Um, then, uh, yeah, this is just to uh, handle the human input. So we have created something like this. We will chat on here. It will answer. It will chat here. It will answer. So let's run that and uh, see what we uh, can get. OK, so we can start something like, so I have already uh, here. I have some questions that I want to ask. So we can ask it. So it will answer, hello, how can I assist you today? So it may not be as fast as this one, because uh, right now I have put uh, I have put the uh, cache. If you see closely here, the cache seed is 42. If I set it to none, then it will not be able to use the caches that uh, I stored earlier. So when does the, uh, the agent store this, uh, the autogen actually stores this cache? Uh, when we actually communicate with the agent, if the question uh, is similar as the previous ones, if the context and, and the system message is actually similar than uh, the, the previous one, then it will give us the cache uh, result as, as a result. So uh, right now it's using the cache results, so it will not, it might not take uh, more time. So what I'm asking this right now is to uh, help me with uh, drafting the lease agreement. 
uh, between two companies and I want him to I want to uh, ask me good questions so which is a requirement gathering part so I will ask you that and we will see what we get so here I wanted to show you what kind of uh, context that we are giving it so you can see hopefully here so from this from this to this is fully uh, the worker context that we are giving it okay so this is the prompt that we uh, gathered earlier from the file so if i show you here so your role is as an information collector so you can also see here your role as a information collector so this is something uh, that we added ourselves inside the function and then uh, it added so the prompt actually ends here your job is only to ask so the prompt ends here and this one is actually from the message uh, that the assistant actually sent so the user needs to draft a disagreement between two agreements generate relevant question to gather necessary requirements this is this message actually came from the assistant agent which we set it as message here you can see so i have actually printed it here so you can actually see it here, the message that the assistant agent actually sent is the user needs to draft the disagreement between two companies and so on and so on and so on. So yeah, using that, uh, it will it was able to come up with these questions. Okay, uh, so it just does its job. You know, gave us a requirement gathering. It, it, it we. What, uh, what I try to do here is to show you the flow between the uh, work agent and the assistant agent, uh, but you can actually do more with it. So right now we are just having two skills, the requirement gathering skill and the simple question and answering skill, but we can add more skill uh, if you want, if you actually want. So um, let's, let's, let's do the second one. So simple question and answering. So let's run it again. Let's copy and paste from our previous message. So yeah, let's let's do this. What does the law say about if everything works right? It will give us an answer. Okay. Uh, now you can see that uh, the retrieval process has actually started and ended. So I will show you where the print has actually come so you can see here that she was uh, started and in the uh, print message and it actually was able to fetch the uh, nose from our people um so this is will be your act on your projects um so, so that as a, as a context will be given to the worker to actually come up with an answer um yeah and this is the answer that the uh, assistant agent actually came up with so it it, it is the uh, Italian though so we might not understand this part we have to translate it but the others make sense and then so uh, up to this point if you have any questions uh, before I go further next we will be seeing the chat history part which is rather uh, uh, important for the production for the, of this of this uh LLM implementations or agent workflow implementations so yeah if you have any questions you can actually tell me no questions okay you can continue then Okay, um, so the primary that we actually saved earlier, we will be able to see it in action. So at this date time, it had this much uh, prompt token, this much output token. It was the assistant that actually had this um, numbers. Then the worker had 1,000 prompt tokens and 483 output tokens and so on. So this is just a primary that I put just to analyze uh, what I'm dealing with. I wanted to see uh, how much token are uh, have been spent on on each step? So, yeah, you can actually take a look at this collab, uh, understand what the timer array uh, is saying, and you can actually calculate the token uh, spent as well. So, yeah. uh, then the, the most important part is the chat metrics. So you can see for the assistant, we have 
this type of chat message history. So we said, hello, how are you? Then, hello, how can I assist you today? What does the law say about civil rights? So, so these are the, the uh, chat messages that were stored by the assistant. And this is a function call. So this is something uh, different from the others because it was a function call to the ask worker function. It was sent by the assistant to the user uh, proxy. Then the user proxy uh, actually uh, accomplished this task. That's this task by executing that function, return the uh, result as you see. So this is the result. And uh, this was the last message that was presented to us. And then we stopped that process and we continued to ask. So does men and women have uh, equal rights? Something or something. So I didn't actually uh, remove this part. I just continued uh, talking to it. So I think we've done the form here right now and we did this kind of thing. Yeah, this one is the correct one. That was the previous uh, talks that we had for just for checking out this process. Um, then we can see how we can uh, uh, analyze our usage summary for assistant. We can see how much it costed us, um, how much were the prompt tokens, how much were the completion tokens, and so on. Um, yeah, it's the same thing, just add it together. And then uh, here we have, we are going to see the chat message that we see here, we are going to uh, transfer this chat message into another chat, uh, on, into our other assistant, and see if we can continue our talk. So here, this is the same uh, assistant that we built, but we just changed uh, the variable name, and it will be a new assistant agent. We have the same uh, user proxy, the same setup, but we changed the variable name, so it will be a new uh, so proxy agent. And here you can see how we collect the user proxy history and assistant history of the previous assistant and user proxy agents. Um, yeah, and for now you can see this user proxies, uh, the new uh, user proxies uh, chat message is really empty. So you can see it's really empty. And later we will see after we uh, pushed our previous chat history here, we will have the uh, chat message. So this one actually, yeah, I think we have run this one. Let's run it again. So you can see, you can see like previously it was empty. Test user proxy two chat message was empty. Now it's filled with the previous assistance uh, ch chat message. So uh, maybe we should change it to uh, the proxy. We'll see. Yeah, let's see. Okay, the chat message have actually been changed from empty uh, dict to details to uh, the previous chat uh, message history from our previous assistant. So this way we can transfer our chat history from one uh, agent to another, but uh, most probably what we will be using is this, we will be storing this chat history message and we will be giving it uh, uh, the chat history whenever we want to do the production uh, phase. So we will see that in the uh, API description as well. So, yeah. um, so for, for, for testing, we uh, will initiate the chat between the test user proxy 2 and the test assistant 2. So the question was, so does man and woman uh, actually uh, equalize in the household? Uh, Okay. You can see we have a trivial again. It tries to come up with this and it tries to give us, like, yes, according to the law, and so on, so on, so on. So we have to exit this one and see the. Uh, so this is the second uh, way of looking at the chat history or the chat message. Uh, yeah, so you can see here. The function, so this is the last method that we sent. This is a function call that the test assistant to actually sent to the uh, worker function. We are using actually the same worker function. Um, then it will send like, yeah, according to the laws mentioned. So it actually 
you can see like here we are using that not relevant to you but it actually used this this laws as a, as a reference to answer this question yes, so this shouldn't happen but even though it, if it, it did happen it it uh, got the content from this one and came up with the answer so this way we can actually transfer our chat uh, history from one agent to another but in production we will store this chat history somewhere and then whenever the whenever a person actually comes and searches something we will use that as chat history to continue to enable the user to continue to chat with the agent so uh, what are some of the future works and plans uh, we can do with this auto chain that we haven't tried is one with uh, if we uh, can use other elements we can we haven't uh, tested it because uh, we mostly work on production stuff so we were using OpenAI's gpt4 o model but we would like to try other elements as well with auto uh, auto -gen. and then also uh, we would like to try multimedia support uh, especially uh, voice you know, uh, looking at what GPT-4 all uh, actually offers all for Omni, what it offers is uh, multimedia support through voice, uh, uh, vision, and so on. So that will be some of the future works and plans uh, that we are looking at. And you guys, you guys can actually look uh, through this also, not for this uh, week's challenge, but for the understanding of everything in the so if you have any question on autogen up to this point you can ask me uh, if not we can continue uh, to the web socket we can see how whatever we have done here is actually implemented as a web socket and how we can actually use uh, front end back in to, you know, to communicate so on. yeah yeah any questions okay Abdurrahman, you can go ahead and ask the question. Can you help me out? Okay. Yep. Uh, sorry, I joined a few minutes left. Uh, what makes me a little bit confused? So, can you give me a uh, mm -hmm. summarization about uh, what we did here? Okay, well, when were you to uh, when were you uh, joining? So, at which point? So, just tell me like here. Yeah, I I watched the whole demo, but uh, I want a uh, uh, summarization for uh, simple summarization for it. Okay, okay. So, I think uh, uh, we have we are we implemented two tasks so, simple question and answering and requirement gathering. Uh, we have this function that will be uh, used later, uh, which you will be able to see on the collab if we actually provide you this uh, collab uh, demo. Um, so the most important parts uh, from the presentation were this, the worker agent. This is an assistant agent, but it will be limited to one task at a time. Uh, this is a function that, we, that actually does uh, exactly that that interacts with this worker agent. What it does is it changes the prompt based on the type of message type, which is uh, between the simple question and answering and the requirement gathering. Uh, it will be able to uh, change the prompt based on uh, that. So you can actually uh, see here how we uh, change the system message. So specifically here, the prompts we have stored here. This is for requirement gathering uh, prompt and we have a simple question and I think it's empty for now. Yeah. So the prompt actually changes based on the message type and the message type is determined by the main assistant agent. Uh, as we see here, so the options are only these two. So it will send either a requirement gathering or simple question and answering. So based on that, uh, the based on the message type, it will change its prompt. Okay, so here it will read the prompt. Here it will change the prompt, um, and then we will prepare a message where it will hold the message and the context 
and the context actually uh, comes for now, at least for these simple tasks, the context is only if retrieval is required and the retrieval will be sent true or false by the assistant agent again. So this retrieval, so it only becomes true or false if it wants to perform a retrieval or not. Um, so for, for this demo, the laws were uh, Italian laws because that was accessible to me. Um, and yeah, so uh, finally we will uh, always give the worker an empty uh, history if there is any history set here. And then we will generate a reply, a reply based on uh, the prepared message which holds the message plus the context. The context is empty if the retrieval is not required. If uh, not, then we will have, uh, if the retrieval is required, then the context will have these important laws. Um, so the prepared message will be given to the worker and the worker's uh, final result will be uh, uh, final result will be uh, returned back by the function. And that's what that's what the worker and ask worker function actually does. Um, then we have the main assistant agent. This is the one that actually handles every uh, task. Uh, we give it this kind of prompt. We tell it that these are the available workers, the requirement gathering and simple question and answering, uh, and everything else you can actually see here. Um, then we set up a linear name config. The most important part here is this function. So if you have seen OpenAI's uh, function definition, then this is uh, pretty much similar. Um, yeah, we give it a, a description of what the function is supposed to do. Uh, we give it uh, uh, the properties, so the message, question, which is a question to the ask worker function, make sure the question includes enough context because as, as I told you, the worker does not know anything. And we have to give, if, if you want it actually uh, to do something, we have to give it some kind of context. So for now, this, might, this one might not be important, but later, so for example, in our work, we actually use these uh, agents to actually draft a document. And when we try to draft a document, we will need the context. So that way we will force the uh, assistant agent to give the worker uh, a context. Um, so it has message, message type, and retriever. So I've already explained this too. Um, so this is the most important part here, functions definition. Um, then we have the termination message. For now, our termination message is the terminate keyword. If the user proxy actually uh, uh, found that terminate uh, keyword is found, then it will present the result to us. If not, uh, it will auto reply to the assistant to actually uh, improve its, as its uh, answers. Or it might be a function call. So, yeah. Um, then we set up the user proxy. So, we say it, we give it the termination message, which is this function. If terminate actually has been detected, then human input uh, human input mode uh, uh, is never because you want it to actually start if uh, a user if a human input is needed. Um, and we have max max consecutive auto reply. So uh, if this terminate has not been detected, then it will it, it will try to for this uh, assistant to come up with a, a better answer that includes this terminate uh, keyword. If not, after three trials, if the assistant could not come up with a good answer, we terminate uh, at the end. Um, then the final result from the assistant will be given to us because we have forced it like, we don't want it to continue like forever, right? For infinite, so we force it to be only three. This is determined by our prompt, how good our prompt is, and our actually uh, the time that we have to execute something. Um, then we have to uh, map the functions. So this is as as worker function. Um, why are we doing this here? Because assistant agent cannot actually call uh, the function by itself uh, in AutoGen. It has to send it to our user proxy. User proxy agent is on that actually execute a function. So yeah, that's why we are mapping the function ask worker, which we said here, to the ask worker function that we uh, presented here. Okay. Um, then we set up a chat environment. So this is how we initiate the chat. Uh, so we initiate chat assistant, 
you give it the uh, assistant agent, clear history, silent too. You can actually experiment with these two. They're just uh, normal stuff. And then there is a message that we will be giving it. Then the last message that is, that is uh, put inside this user proxy chat message is a uh, response from the assistant agent. So we will send that last message as a response. This way, uh, the chat with agent uh, actually uh, receive a message and returns a message, which is like a normal uh, chat. Uh, here we, we are just coming up with some type of display to show the result and so on. So for this example, we are asking it, so what does the law say about civil rights and household rights? And it knew that uh, simple question, it, it is a simple question in answering. Uh, so it asked that, so a retrieval was needed. So it retrieved uh, the details and it was able to come up with uh, the laws that outline some of these uh, laws. And these laws are designed and so on and so on and so on. If you have a question, you can continue. So you also saw how the requirement gathering part actually works. So, so the good thing about this is uh, before this agentic workflow, uh, we used to do like, we used to have an intent detect detection model which we will be building uh, using the old ML or an NLP methods. Um, and we will, we will, we will, we will uh, put them uh, in the middle so that when a user actually asks something, this uh, intent uh, identifier model actually identifies who, what is this user want, what does this user want, and uh, it, uh, it directs this uh, user request to the right model at that time. With this agentic workflows, we are not the one that it, that actually determines uh, these uh, ways, uh, or we are not the ones that actually forces the pipelines. But the LLM itself is able to actually identify what what it wants, uh, which uh, worker that it wants uh, to achieve its task. So yeah, that's how much. So if you have actually worked on uh, a production machine learning stuff or actually tested some kind of uh, works that actually involves uh, two or three tasks, then you know how this uh, intent identification part of the uh, ML process is really hard. And uh, this uh, agentic workflow actually made us, made it really, really, really simple. Um, so after this, we actually talked about uh, how we would store chat history. Um, so this is how you can get the uh, chat message. Uh, how you would uh, analyze the user summary for assistant and worker. Um, and then we showed uh, how we would give the previous chat history to another assistant agent by creating a new assistant agent and a new user proxy. Uh, we gave it, we gave them like the previous user proxy. So you can see this is a previous uh, user proxy. We gave it uh, for the uh, user proxy. Uh, uh, so we gave it actually here. So for test assistant two, we gave it the previous chat history of uh, the user proxy history. So uh, yeah, this way we'll give it uh, the history of both uh, the assistant and the user proxy to the new assistant and new user proxy. So after that, we saw that the chat history actually, that message actually changed. You can see here before previously it was empty so i have printed it here sorry i have printed it here it was empty as you can see uh now it's not it is filled with the previous uh, chat chat history so this is really important if you are thinking of uh coming up with a prototype or production uh, it was not. um yeah then we saw what the future works and plans uh, would be. So hopefully this is uh, has been a good summary. So, yeah. what the uh, one that asked that? Um, yeah. Thank you. Rahman. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there are any questions, then you can ask me here. If not, you can quickly go through the uh, WebSocket because I think that's the most important thing here. 
if, if you understand this uh, presentation or collab, then we changing this into a, a prototype demo for, with fast API or Flask API, uh, whatever you guys are trying to do. It's really simple that I can show you what it will look like uh, on fast API that we did. Um, so let's, let's just start. Uh, so let me change the screen here quickly. Let's just go through it. Okay. Okay, you can see my screen. Okay. Okay. So here I will show you um, the uh, fast API version of whatever, whatever we have uh, talked about. Um, this is a normal socket I/O setup. Uh, this one we use it to. If you have any API calls, uh, we can actually mount it on the on app, and then whenever we call those uh, APIs, we don't actually use this one, but slash API slash, for example, slash API slash will give us hello world and so on. This slash will be used by the socket app. Okay. Um, um, so here, take a look at this. We we uh, we use we have it to store our chat history. So you can actually use other uh, databases as well, MongoDB. Uh, we can use it. Uh, we have it. You can use it. We have it is a little bit restricted, uh, but currently we are using that. So I have given you that code uh, here. If you look at here, here we have the chat. Our chat history name will be found inside the environment file. Uh, then we created this class with these properties. So we have to store the chat. ID, the roles, and the chat history, which holds it, which holds uh, the content, the role, function code that we have actually see, seen inside the uh, chat message uh, function. So just like that, we are uh, we are also storing the session, the chat history, and the session will be stored. Yep. So, yep. This is our normal the socket I/O uh, functions. Uh, here we have our session ID. We will get all the sessions that were available. Uh, we have the session details of specific session that we have. Uh, this is the session chat history. So you guys can actually go through it and see what's meant by that. Uh, but we use these sessions. So this chat history is for, for our front end. You guys can actually change it for your front end. Uh, and why not even be uh, important for you guys? Because you can actually use the uh, chat history instead of the session. So if you check it closely, there uh, there is a chat history database and the session DB database. Um, what this one is referring to is a session DB database. So that's this one. Uh, yeah, this one is session DB database. Uh, but you guys can actually use this session, session chat history, get the chat history from the chat history database, and filter the, the not important ones like the function calls because you don't want to show users the function calls on the interface, uh, and give it to your front end and come up with something that is good. So, yeah, we use the sessions uh, to store so. Session, both the sessions and the chat history, where the sessions will hold the more filtered uh, history, and the chat history will hold the entire chat message that the agents and the user proxy actually hold. So, um, yes, that's, that's something to look for for you guys. Um, you can you can store a session or this chat history. You can use this chat history, filter it here. You know, you can actually filter. Uh, write something like filter to chat history and send it send it as a chat history here. You guys can do anything. Both ways is possible. Uh, then we have when a text message is received. So handle an incoming chat chat message. Uh, when a message has been received, first 
we will uh, clean the chat history for reply. So reply history. So I don't think we have actually used this one. Yeah, yeah, we have not, we have not used this one. Um, this is uh, a project that uh, um, again I have cleaned it. I have removed some part of it. So because we, we do not need it. Uh, then we will give the uh, agents the chat history that were that we actually stored if the same session ID has been found. Okay, you can see what we are doing. This is the same thing that we did earlier. If you see on the collab, so you kind of will have an idea on how to do that if you actually take a closer look at these functions. And this one actually enables us to send the message to the chat agent. So how are we doing that? We are creating a new agent chat. There is the agent manager here where it holds the user proxy and the legal assistant, which is the same thing, by the way, that we saw on the collab. Um, except this cache uh, seed is none for now. Yeah, so yeah. Then we have the embedding, the tasks. These are the two tasks, the session ID will be stored, the vector store, the retriever, and so on. Uh, the, the ask worker function is the same as you see as you saw earlier, except this one we have uh, translated the result into English so that everything you see here is English. Okay. Okay. Other than that, I think everything is clear. So this is the same message function. What it does uh, is it just does this one. So it will be asynchronous, but we have put a weight uh, into it. Um, the recipient, so this is something that you guys have seen earlier, okay? Uh, then we will take the last message, as you as you saw earlier. Uh, we will use, uh, this loop is not actually important here for this task, so you can actually remove it. Uh, also this ones, okay? You can, you can remove those two. Um, then we want to understand how much we are using for each uh, uh, worker and agent. Uh, we store the context language. It's just for analysis, not for, time for uh, normal chat. And then we get the result by determining which one is the last message. And we give it the final results. So this is the same thing that we did on the collab, just uh, we clean it a bit and make make it work so that we get every uh, analytics information that we need. Uh, then after that, we prepare this response message where it will hold the text response, which is such a, as we saw, the same message will send a JSON. So we will just give it the message and the full result we want to store it because uh, I just wanted to to uh, analyze those numbers that we saw. And these ones are just for, for our front end, uh, not important for you guys. Um, then this, this was the received message. So for the sessions, we are storing this received message for, uh, again, we are, we are we are saving the received message and the response message because later on when we uh, if we send the similar session ID we want to uh, show the user his previous uh, his or hers uh, previous uh, chat history and they can actually continue that, that chat. Um, so update sessions you see here. So we are storing this one and this one in our database. So you can see like minus one, minus one, minus two. This should be actually minus two. Okay, okay. Uh, so actually, I don't think it's necessary. But yeah, let's just continue. I don't think P1 is necessary. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll check it out and which one is necessary or not. Um, then we store the chat history. So the chat history, I want to show you here what we are storing. So this is the same thing that uh, you can find on the collab, okay? Uh, we are uh, storing the same assistant history. We are updating the chat history data. You can see here, so the chat history will be updated by the current uh, agent's chat uh, message, okay? 
so yeah just like that so this is a really really uh, simple fast api uh, endpoint and we will be able to chat with this so i think i have i have uh, i think i have run it all. okay so you can see yep let's see that oh. Yep. So here, so what does it look? So this was the last message that I sent earlier. And if we actually let's 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 just ask it, ask it what one question. Uh -huh. So let's copy and paste. Let's see what is happening in the background. So you see, this was uh, so we made it silent earlier on the collab so that we didn't see this interaction between the agent, the user proxy, and the assistant. But now we we didn't set the uh, silent uh, true uh, parameter, so we are seeing what the interaction actually looks like. And if everything uh, works out, it will work, but. Yeah, basically, this is how you will implement the uh, back end, at least. The front end, you guys actually can take care of that because I'm not a, a big front end guy. So, yeah, you can see here that I didn't even make an effort on the front end. So, yeah, yeah maybe it's my internet or it is trying to identify something. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I can provide. So, Maybe it's the internet, but it actually will answer something. So uh, hopefully uh, we will uh, be able to give you the collab and maybe also the WebSocket if possible. If not, then I think the collab will, will be enough for you so that you can actually do this week's challenge. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. Uh, based on both uh, uh, autogen on the web socket, so yeah, I'm done here. Okay, ready? Yeah, um, so yeah, great presentation, and uh, my question is on the Web sockets. I understand. Uh -huh. um, how is it? What is it used for? Like um, the difference. So there's the the normal API routes, but now we're using sockets. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there an event streaming? Somewhere? Yeah. 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 So, so what what a socket actually give you is a pipeline where without the disconnection that you can actually transfer these API calls. So these are not actually API calls, it's just, these are just messages. So the uh, latency will be much, much less when you use a socket rather than a normal API. Um, uh, so yeah, basically that's, that, that's the most, uh, I think the best explanation is it will make it really fast and in uh, production, we will not be setting the chat, 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 you know, chat interactions in normal APIs. You would do it in WebSocket because the latency is an issue there. So uh, you should be implementing it with WebSocket. It will be because it, no matter what you do, uh, when you put it into production, it has to be kind of in this WebSocket uh, type of thing. So yeah. Okay, thank you. And also on the, I saw that there were, there was a, um, what do you call? It? You're passing some saying that maximum auto reply is three. So, uh -huh. is that in that case is like the uh, explain that if the user can type um, um a question and then will there be like three replies coming from the backend uh okay. or the agent? Okay, so uh. What that uh, parameter actually defines is uh, there will be uh, two things. So the assistant can return a text message or a function call, right, in our use case. 
And uh, when it is a function call, it will not have this terminate keyword. And when it when when it is a text message that is returned by the assistant agent, it will have a terminate uh, uh, keyword uh, in it at the end in our uh, prompt. We have put actually the terminate keyword should be at the end of this, uh, as the end of your uh, responses. So if this terminate keyword has not been uh, sent by the assistant, and if it is a text. Uh, then the user proxy does not know if he if it has to stop so that the human actually input something or it should uh, continue uh, it should allow this uh, agent to continue so it will choose the auto reply method and it will allow the assistant to actually improve its answer and it will if you actually if we make this silent uh, false it will actually we will be actually, actually we will be uh, we will be able to see uh, what the user proxy actually re re returns to the assistant as empty. It's just empty. So if uh, until this auto reply number actually reaches, the, the user proxy returns empty to the assistant agent. And when it reaches the, the number three, in our case, uh, when, when it reaches the number three, whatever the assistant actually returns, uh, then the user proxy will give it to us and show us that, that answer, even though it's bad or good. It, 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 it doesn't matter after that. So a good example maybe is, let's say if, if we remove this terminate keyword as the end from the prompt, and if we say hello to it, the, the assistant will return to us like, hello, how are you, right? Um, and then if we continue, if we want to continue this conversation, and still the is terminate message that we, store, we uh, put on the user proxy, if you uh, saw the collab, uh, if that is still waiting for the terminate keyword, um, then the user proxy will not present that answer to us. Instead, it will return an empty message to the assistant. And the assistant does not know what to do with that. And it will return like, your message is empty. Uh, what can I do for you? And again, it will return empty because the user proxy will be waiting on that terminate keyword. And the assistant does not know he, it has to send the terminate keyword. So when that then that conversation will be going for a maximum three uh, times, and at some point the assistant will say like you are sending an empty message. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, what can I do for you? And when that uh, number three is reached, the user proxy does not care if it has a terminate keyword or not. It just returns to us that message, and we will be able to see that message. Uh, so. Sorry, guys. So that's what this uh, term message message that this termination message is being used for, uh, and that's what uh, uh, and that's what that's why we are putting some kind of uh, gateway on the uh, assistant prompt to actually pressure it to put this terminate keyword at, at the end of this uh, prompt. Um, other than that. Uh, the loop will come if the function call is uh, is uh, actually called by the assistant. Um, even if uh, we don't need this function call to have this terminate uh, keyword, then the uh, user proxy actually thinks counts it as a, like it, it counts it as it it has to respond with an auto reply, and it will discount like one in the auto reply message. So, because we will not, we if if our prompt is really good, then the auto reply will not be called as much as like three or four times, and our uh, uh, you know uh, task ex execution will be really good if the prompt is really good. But if the prompt is really bad, then this auto reply uh, number will be reached like really really fast, um, and our uh, last result will be really really bad. So that's what we have observed so far uh, when we do the projects that we are doing right now. Uh, so that's the main. So those are really, really important uh, concepts here for, in our project. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and one, one, a final more on the web circuits is uh, I had a scenario that I thought from my past experience with it is. When, when the user asks a question on a, on a document, we instead of waiting for the entire application and the final answer, we 
you can keep sending the updates like uh, it's now retrieving and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, can that work that way? Can those sockets keep sending uh, the updates as the user waits? Um, yeah. So uh, right now I haven't I haven't actually tried that. It's a normal chat uh, chat GPT and uh, chat completion APIs. You can actually do that. With Autogen, I haven't tried that because we didn't need uh, that uh, feature yet. Uh, but yeah, that, that's something to look at as well. But storing that message uh, at the beginning might not be a good choice. So uh, you can send those, uh, that uh, result as they come, but storing it will be at, at last. So maybe that's something we can look at. You know, that's, that's Maybe that's something that you can actually put on this week's challenge. and. Press your data connect the ten academy team, maybe. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other question? Okay, so um, I think we're done here. So tomorrow we will be having a thing. Another session where uh, we will be discussing uh, this agentic workflows for low resource uh, language, specifically on Amharic. So, yeah, um, I'm excited to actually go through it with you guys. So, yeah, Ten Academy team, I think so. Yeah, thank you, Taspay. So, can we get the reaction for Taspay from everyone? <laughs> Thank you, Tasai, for the amazing presentation. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Good day. Bye, guys. Okay.